seen some of the power of coroutines, and I want to make the transitions between scenes work a lot better. First of all, I want to turn these scenes right here uh, into basically using this prefab. So, I also need the main camera. Let's go ahead and fix the camera before I drop this into all the other scenes. So what we're going to do is go to standard assets. I don't think we got them yet. So here we go. Import package. And we're going to go to cameras. We get the prefabs, the scripts. Won't get any cross-platform input uh, because we already have that. So this will give me the prefab cameras, and I'm going to grab a free look camera, and it lets you control the direction it looks while it follows, uh, positionally follows a uh, target. So this is what we call instructions. And sometimes it's good to read them. The free look camera is designed to follow a target's position while allowing the user to rotate the angle of the camera with a mouse or touch by gesture. So that's exactly what we're going to be using. So drop one into your scene and set the target field on the root of the camera rig. All right, so it's the root of the camera rig that has the target field. Player's type player, don't even have to assign the target. Player. Alright, so we won't have to auto target it. Um, Alright. So, let's go ahead, free look camera rig, drop it in. Main camera. This had anything particularly interesting in it. Yeah, that was just kind of a dummy follower. I mean, it did follow it by position, but it didn't uh, do any rotation at all. So I'm okay deleting this script. I don't think it has anything useful in it. Make sure you delete your camera controller, not the one that we imported. No, you don't have to leave if you don't want to. All right, of course, it's going to screw up main camera, but I wanted to take that out because I didn't want to have to worry. So now I know there's basically nothing in here we're really using that's worthwhile. So I'm going to delete it. Now is our free look camera rig target right here. This is what they're referring to. Uh, rollerball. Now, if you notice, it already has a player tag in it. So according to those instructions, I don't need to actually set this. Rollerball does need to know about the camera. Oh, I think we did it in script already. Hey, we'll find out in a second here. Alright, can move the camera nicely. Uh, looks like it is rolling with respect to the camera position. I'm just rolling forward and backwards. Alright. Uh, if you notice, the follow speed's a little bit slow. Let's go ahead. Probably the follow distance is not great either. I hit escape. Oh, there's my mouse. Alright, that's going to be on the camera rig. And let's try. I need the instant view. I guess I only want one. I am going to reset the uh, position of this camera rig. That will put it. I think it's going to get the basically the position of the ball, more or less. So I'm basically trying to put it in the center of the ball. Whatever. Close enough. All right. The main camera is now going to be here. 
here's a camera preview. You can also click on main camera. Or just align view to selected. So this is the view the camera would have. So what I'm going to do is come back a little bit more and up a little bit. All right, now I'd like the camera to basically be where I have this uh, editor camera. So again, make sure you got main camera selected, game object uh, align with view. So now the camera basically zoomed back quite a bit. So there's the pivot. Here's the rig. Zoom in a little bit more so this makes more sense. You got <clears throat> this is where the position's going to move, be moving to. Here's the pivot point where it kind of pivots up, down, left, and right. So the main camera's back here. So it's basically pivoting right about where this light is. And just changing that, hopefully, keep the ball in view quite a bit more. I don't think we need it such a, oh wow, I'm really good at this game. Like a little more responsive controls on the ball as well, but the camera feels pretty decent. The ball's not running out of frame constantly. I could hit back and then forward. I think the camera gets a little bit of momentum too. Yeah, this feels good. I'm enjoying it. Uh, if you notice, the ball is centered. If you want kind of an over the shoulder view, that's very easy to do right now. The main camera. I can do it without aligning anything. If I want it kind of on the left side, I can go there. If I want the ball more on the right side of the camera, go right there. <clears throat> this gives like a more over the shoulder. Now you put it too far, that totally didn't work at all. All right, I don't really want to get into looking at the script of this camera right now. That's good enough. Let's do the next thing. Uh, I want to do a coroutine on loading the scene. So, maybe it's better than trying to rename these to just duplicate this guy a couple times. Probably gonna go faster. All right, so I'm gonna make small changes to, uh oh, and I just changed the first one there. Break that. Nope. All right. So I'm good with platform two. And by two, I meant one. Now I have four of these. And let's ground it with the walls. And then we'll just do some rotations here. So that's first one right there. The second one, scale. Save that, three. Put extra pickups. Oh, that's too many. All right, let's put four. All right, and last one. Four. So hopefully play it one and it will just jump to all the other four. Good. 
build settings. That is super important. Delete. Add. Display. All right. <clears throat> I'm only going to go from one to two. Oh, my God. Oh, I hard coded in scene. Perfect. So, substring uh, goes start index, so zero is beginning, and then I need five characters. And hopefully, I use name. Yep. All right. So that should dynamically load off um, plath instead of scene. So another perfect example, don't hard code in things. There we go. Plath 2. Maybe the lighting is different, but it's kind of neat. All right, last one. And this. What will happen? I forgot what we did. Probably nothing. This loaded up one again. All right. <clears throat> so let's put a timer at the end of those. I'm feeling pretty good about the way this is working. Um, and it was on player manager. So what we're going to do right here, before we go and load scene, what I want to do is basically pause. And I remember doing this back in here. Grab actually all this right here. So I don't have to come back later for more. All right, so we're going to run a coroutine that doesn't exist. Here's the coroutine that will exist. And too far, too far. And fix this error. Did need to go back one more. All right, that's annoying. Let's drop that in. Uh, Obviously, gem timer is probably not the best. I'm going to hard code one. I don't think there's a reason to wait for a super amount of time for now. That's very easy to change later. So, what I need to do. Get this down here. And now I have a serious problem. Let's undo everything. All right, let's compute name plus number. So I think it's called code factoring. That was useless. All right, so we'll just generate our next scene here. Just going to do a load scene, and all I need is the string. 
string down here. Manager, all right, so that should in between every single scene pause it. And I think we get the U in. Boom, there we go. All right. So we do have a counter. Let I want to build to a platformer where we can do other things with the pickups, but there's basically a goal, and the goal loads the next level. So I want to build a quick goal here. I am thinking a cube will work. Wow, that's very random placement. Make it easy to get into this cube. I'm going to go three, three, three. Now, this collider, I don't want it to be a physical collider. I want to go inside the goal. So I'm going to turn on is trigger. It means you'll be able to pass through it. It won't act like a physics object. You're not going to bounce off of it. I think that's what... Yeah, if you take off box collider here, so we'll <clears throat> see what happens. I'm going to hit the first. I will hit it. Thud. Um, another thing is there's two types of collisions that are checked. Uh, there's on a collision on trigger. We are only reacting to something on trigger enter. We're not reacting to on collision enter. You literally put collision right there, and then this changes uh, something a little bit different. I think it's a collision, which is very similar to this object right here. It just has a little more physics-y stuff on it because you went from a physics object to a physics object. So it has some physical physics properties to it. So that's back to a trigger. This big cube, now this is going to be our end zone. Now I don't want it to be opaque if we're going to travel through it. I want to be able to look through it if we're going to travel through it. So this is a default material here. Let's go ahead. I'm going to duplicate a pickup material. I'm going to call it and material. I actually want it to be transparent. I want it to be fast. So actually let me go on mobile for transparent. No. Let's do a particle. Oh, I really don't have much to work with. That's a bit bright. <clears throat> Hella bright too, wow. <laughs> it's hurting my eyes looking at the editor. Well, that's not bad actually. Alright, I can definitely go into Photoshop and edit this if I wanted to, but this is actually decent right here. <clears throat> Normally transparency is bad, but I did additives, so it's a very light load on the GPU. I think that's reasonable. So when I go inside that, I want to finish the uh, level. Let's give it a little more exciting. Give it a light. I'm 
point light. I do want to draw. I'm really drawing this for the halo. It's really what I want. I also wanted this to add a little bit of color to this. And now, yeah, I need such a big range on this light. See how this looks moving around. One thing I'll be able to do is the light is spherical, so I'll be able to rotate that object without messing up the light on the inside. That might be a nice feature. But that looks okay. So basically what I want, I'm gonna hit that, boom, and the level. Alright, so let's check out this error. So what I made an assumption here, which I didn't mention because I didn't realize I made it. Uh, the assumption is that the object we hit has a parent. So first of all, the collider right there. Oh, jeez, had that open already. Inherited members. There we go. Uh, everything has a transform in a game object, so you're guaranteed to have everything you see right here. Uh, you may not have an interesting name. Uh, it may be an empty string, but you're guaranteed to have every ob every uh, property you see right here. Uh, that's with the collider. So that's why I'm not worried about other dot transform. That's totally fine. Every component, in particular, every collider has a transform. Where where I went wrong is by hitting the right here. <clears throat> so let's think about how to redo this. So again, get component pickup didn't work because pickup was in a child. Oh, was in a parent. So maybe there is a get component in parent. There we go. So we're going to get the pickup in the parent and then use the pickup to activate the hit. All right, so this is really nice. This is what we do if uh get a hit. All right, and if pickup's not no, boom. All right. Well, now I'm going to have a second type of pickup. So I could subclass pickup and then override the hit. That would be a reasonable thing to do. The other thing I would get for free would be this nice animation, which I'm actually somewhat fond of. Although I may want to change it later. All right, let's just write a new. Let's write a new one. We'll still put the hit method in. Nope, we'll use the exact same code. There's no reason to redo this. It would be too similar. All right, so we're going to let's do this with a game tag. I haven't really used those much. I want the end zone to be different than the uh, pickup. So we get to go tag right here. I'm going to go add tag. So we got pickup and end zone. I'll think you got player by default, I'm pretty sure. Pick up end zone. That's all I could think that we really have right now. Maybe environment. Yeah. Uh, you might be tempted to do like a light or a camera, but there's other ways to find see if there's a light component attached or a camera component attached. The reason uh, pickup and end zone is because they're very similar objects. Uh, they're even going to have the same scripts attached to them. So I need some way to distinguish one from the other. So when we now go for a hit, oh, I better attach pickup script also. And zone, light, lighter. Okay. 
All right. Um, the stream count's a little higher, so it'll go a little bit slower. Really fine. Now make sure end zone. And we got better pickup. Now pickup better pickup and oops, wrong pickup. Pickup tag pickup. All right. <clears throat> So we're still going to disable our collider. We're still going to run animation coroutine, but now I have to decide what type of, what game tag do I have? Like what type of object is this? Is this a end zone or is this a pickup? You could also use the name of the item here, but very likely you're going to have to start stub stringing. That gets annoying. So that's really where you want to start using the uh, tags. While we're here, like give this guy main camera. Get the other default tag. Oh, it's already finished right there. I wonder if that is the default built-in one for end zone. Oh well. Oh, environment. All right, so this would be useful. Uh, maybe I have a moving platform, and that probably is another tag I'd add. Um, where like environments like static environment, it's not going to move. And then if I have a moving platform, that may have a moving a moving platform tag on it, um, so I can you know determine what type of thing I'm running into. All right, so hit. I really like using the transform to uh, get the things, but you can definitely use the game object, or you can most of the things on the transform are also on. On the script itself, uh, so we want tag. Uh, tag is. Did I capitalize? This is important. Yeah, so it should. Be, is there a space in there? I bet there is a space. Let me just go tag. Yep. This will just be the tag attached to this particular object. Up and zone didn't have a space. All right. So really, here's where we want to load the next level. That was done. Here basically, but I did a lot of computations here. All right, so the good news is I think all this can go. Yeah, this all has to do with the mean. And it really makes sense to put right next to where I'm actually going to uh, load all this up. So I no longer have a next scene. All right. So we'll wait and then basically compute all this. So what I need to do public. So there's two ways to end the level now. You could get the total count, boom, end the level, or way back in pickup, we can actually call this coroutine. So load timer is in player manager. All right, it's also not static, so I don't just need the name of the 
the class, I need the actual player manager object. So where is this player manager? It is on the rollerball. So I could pass the rollerball in as a parameter here on hit. That would be one option, or I can find uh, that in the scene. Oh, so I would find that in the scene by doing game object dot somewhere. Do it with a uh, type. Probably. Ball. Yep. So basically, the ball is the object I need. There should be exactly one ball in the scene. So this should return the single ball. Ah. Uh, so we are. Ball is in this namespace here, and in order to use it, we have to use this namespace. Use the easy way. <clears throat> I'll have to paste this line in, but you have to add the using uh, Unity Standard Assets vehicle ball. All right, so now we're going to get back. Uh, Get the ball now. And this is method on ball. Hmm. Oh, geez. This is in Player Manager. So. All right, so that's a little bad coding right there. I should call that Player Manager. Using F2 to save some time. You see it edits both at the same time. All right. I think that's all we need to do for the end zone. Uh, up. And we've already run the animation coroutine to uh, basically shrink it down to zero. All right. Make sure you hit save everything back there. There should be two ways to exit this level. One of which is hit that one right there. Huh. Not too bad. All right. So one thing you notice that um, the camera kind of did a weird jumpy thing. I'm pretty happy with where this is. <clears throat> the reason the camera did that jump, uh, if I hit apply on the camera rig, this camera rig should apply in the, basically I spread it out further so the camera wasn't so close to the ball. So I hit that light the first time through. Hmm. Oh, that's the clipping on the wall. That's what's happening. The clipping on the wall right there. That's why. So I like this glow right here. What I'm going to do is lower the main lights down. I think they're way too bright. And there's actually only one light here. I don't have to move the light up, but <clears throat> I like to have the light on the screen as I adjust it. Let's 
can't really see the rays on there. Oh, you have to open these up, right? I forgot about that. That's how you see the actual object represented here. Now, I don't need this the icon to be so big. Let's get into lighting for a minute. This would give a lot of options that we're not really going to use. And it makes sense for me to dock it next to the scene. It does require a little bit wider. Oh, there we go. I don't think I really have a choice in the skybox without importing something. Uh, sun, here we go. Now I got a problem. Maybe I'll drop it here. My problem, I can't drag the directional light into the sun uh, when those two windows are on top of each other. The rest should be decent. I just want to turn the uh, intensity down a bit. It doesn't seem to be affecting anything. There we go. I just want to make it a little more reasonable. All right, so that's a little bit better, I think. It would make it more obvious where the end is. <clears throat> you can easily uh, add animation to change the size, make the size fluctuate a little bit. It does use the uh, update method. That's in these guys right here. Uh, so you could check the tag in there, but if you start doing that, uh, checking tags every update method, that's when you probably want to write two separate methods so that you're not doing that constant checking.